Hello everybody, this is my Draw My Life. This is where I bring you up to date on everything that's happened um, in the last 27 years. Well, not everything, because I've got like 10 minutes to do it. So on roughly June the 13th, 1985, um, Debbie and Dave Brown, well, they, you know, and about nine months later on March 13th, 1986, a miracle happened. Me, I was born, boom. My dad worked for an office products company and climbed mountains in his spare time. Actually, when I was three months old, dad climbed the Matterhorn, which is pretty amazing. Mum was a PE teacher at school and played a lot of hockey and a lot of sports in her spare time. We frequently holidayed at the beach and apparently I used to eat the sand, which inevitably led to sandy nappies. Gross. Sorry about that, Mum. Speaking of nappies, um, I actually starred in a Pampers advert. Yeah, I was the baby with the super smooth butt. I actually still get recognised on a regular basis. When I was just two and a half years old, my sister Samantha was born. I seem to remember being quite stoked that I had someone to play Lego with and uh, beat up and force feed slugs and that kind of thing. We were a very outdoorsy kind of family and our holidays always consisted of camping or skiing or walking or things like this. Dad even took me in his backpack once when we went skiing. I probably loved it. My mum used to force me to do ballet. Well, my sister used to do ballet and mum liked to just drop us both off at the same thing, I think. so. But when I was five years old, I actually realised what was going on and put my foot down and said, Oi! I'm not doing this ballet thing no more. So I took up tennis, gymnastics, cricket, and all sorts. Samantha, however, continued to dance and dance very well. She went to dance college and is now actually a professional dancer. And I found myself trying kayaking at a come and try it course at Elmbridge Canoe Club. I enjoyed it immensely and made a lot of good friends at the canoe club, which actually meant I joined the canoe club. My cousins Andrew and David were awesome role models for me growing up. Andrew's sporting achievements and David's creativity had a huge impact on me. And thanks to my grandparents' generosity, our families travelled to some beautiful parts of the world. I think this is where I fell in love with travelling. By age 15, Elmbridge Canoe Club had become my second home. And training became a priority. I often miss social events with my school friends because I was away racing pretty much every weekend. But I was having a great time and I made some fantastic friends in kayaking. The older paddlers at Elmbridge Canoe Club, such as Ivan Lawler, had a huge impact on my upbringing. They were fantastic role models for me. Ivan was an Olympian and a multiple world champion and at the absolute top of his game in marathon racing. I basically wanted to be Ivan Lawler. School was quite fun for me, but I wish that I'd paid a little bit more attention in class, as now I'm actually genuinely interested in learning. The only subjects I actually worked hard at were the ones I enjoyed, so that was two, PE and art. I loved graphic design, but then my GCSE teacher was a total cow. I actually ended up hating the subjects because of her. It was age 16 that I was given my first Great Britain team vest and I went to Spain to race at the Junior Marathon World Championships in K2 with Paul Witchley, my friend. We ended up coming ninth and absolutely loved the whole experience. This inspired me to train even harder and focus all my energy onto sport. The following year in 2003 I was 17. It was a good year for me. I passed my driving test after three attempts and I went to the Marathon World Championships again in K1 this time and I took the win. I got a bit emotional. For all of these races, my mum and dad followed me around the world to help support me. Also, I think my parents were very proud because they put a lot of time and effort into my sport. When I turned 18, I became a senior and I actually really struggled with the transition between racing juniors and racing seniors. It was a whole new ball game. I couldn't really keep up with the training program that the coaches were setting on the sprint team, but I was having the absolute time of my life on training camps and trips with some of my best friends. 
Going through tough experiences like training camps and races and the pressure of being a professional athlete really brings people together, especially when everybody's in the same boat. It's a very competitive environment, but in the end, after each season, you become closer friends. Between the ages of 17 and 25, I did actually have two proper relationships. They were both with fellow kayakers and it was awesome, but at the same time it was very difficult because of the ups and downs of training, results. It wasn't ideal and didn't work out in the end, but it was nice while it lasted and I have no regrets. As I was still young and still developing, I couldn't really keep up with the demands of the training and I got ill quite often on training camps. On one training camp I got quite bored of being ill and I ended up going into town and getting drunk with my friend Paul. I ended up jumping off of a bridge completely naked and Paul filmed it on his phone. Needless to say, the coaches found out and I got sent home. This was a turning point in my canoeing career because I then focused on marathon racing a bit more, which I'm actually better at. That year I went to the Senior Marathon World Championships and actually came fourth. And it actually made me realise that the guys I'm racing are just human. In 2007, I gave Sprint another go and ended up paddling K2 with Johnny Schofield, who was new to the team. We were the underdogs, but won the 500 meter selection races and ended up racing at the Senior Sprint World Championships. We actually made the final and came ninth. We were just 0.2 seconds away from Olympic qualification for Beijing. That year we also got a medal at the under 23 European Sprint Championships. It was such a fantastic year, I absolutely loved it. Although Johnny and I didn't actually end up racing in the Beijing Olympics, the consolation prize was actually going to watch. We were there in VIP watching our good friend Tim Brabants get Great Britain's first ever Olympic gold medal in canoeing. I remember I was standing on my seat, cheering for Tim as loud as I possibly could, trying to film it, trying to take photos and basically going wild. And the people behind me were getting very angry because they couldn't see anything. I found out later that day that it was actually the King and Queen of Sweden. I had a new coach called Ian Wynn. He was a bronze medalist in Athens and he had a fantastically positive influence on my lifestyle, my nutrition and the way I approached my training. I came out of the winter in 2010 absolutely flying and I was unbeatable all year in the marathons. I took the win at the Marathon World Championships and life hasn't been the same since. In early 2011, I was invited out to train in Cape Town with Tim Brabants. I absolutely fell in love with Cape Town and it's actually become my second home. I was still making films in 2011 of my travels and I really started to try and learn a bit more about filmmaking and push my videos to the next level. I had an awesome year in 2011. I didn't get some amazing results, but I did have a fantastically good time. Uh, the highlight was actually going to Singapore for the World Championships. After Singapore, I decided to give canoeing a little break for a year and actually focus on filmmaking and my career. I got some work for a couple of companies making films and taking some photos. During my year out of canoeing, I got invited over to Cape Town by a girl called Nicole. Now, she'll tell you that I invited myself. It's not the case. We borrowed her dad's Land Rover and a whole group of us drove east on a two or three week road trip. It was absolutely life changing. I made a video over the road trip and it was the birth of my visual vibes videos. After the road trip, Nicole and I became quite close and when I went home after a few weeks, we both decided that being apart sucked. We jumped straight into a long distance relationship. Johnny Schofield, who I used to paddle K2 with, actually raced at the London 2012 Olympics and medalled. This hugely inspired me and although I didn't go back to sprint racing, I went back to marathon racing and trained throughout the winter. I spent four and a half months in Cape Town. This gave Nicole and I a lot of time to get to know each other. Nicole and I have nearly been together for a year now and we've had some awesome adventures and we've got many, many more planned. When I came back from Cape Town, I met up with Louis again. 
We got on really well and we talked about YouTube and Louis inspired me to start video blogging. I was training and vlogging and I went to the European Marathon Championships and took fourth place, which I was really stoked with considering I'd only been training again for a few months after a whole year off. After this, I flew back to Cape Town to see Nicole and to do an epic race called the Berg River Marathon, which is 240 kilometers over four days. It was by far the most fun and most challenging race I've ever done. If you want any more details about that, you'll have to watch the vlogs. After the Berg, I decided that I wasn't gonna paddle anymore for this season anyway, and I was just gonna concentrate all of my energy into my YouTube channel. Since then, I've been vlogging and YouTubing and building my channel. Louis has introduced me to so many fantastic and interesting people in the YouTube community. I feel quite accepted already, and I absolutely love reading everybody's positive comments that they leave on my videos. Through my videos on YouTube, I hope to inspire people to commit themselves and work hard to achieve their goals. As this video goes online, I'll actually be preparing and probably even leaving to India on my biggest adventure yet with a group of friends, Jack, Finn, Louis, Harry, Max, and Will. Hopefully I'll come back alive. I'm really excited for my future. I cannot wait to capture all the best bits of my adventures and share them with you guys on YouTube. If you're interested in joining me and following my journey, just click subscribe. See you in a vlog real soon. Much love.